so starting with summit test tester for the the first one yeah summit yeah i got a, a little bit of introduction for summit here uh, well whatever is written here well the way i know him or the sort of like my son like to refer to him is like who have seen the film Rawan? <laughs> well, it's it's a it's it's about the games making and all that sort of things. And the, well, the, uh, he is like the Saru Khan of that film. Right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter is here. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So I would ask yeah Samit to please uh, come and well uh, give his presentation on this how to win this sort of computer games. Okay, that was a intellectually embarrassing introduction out there by uh, Vijay Pazasari, sir. So, uh, don't expect all the songs and dances here. <laughs> all of the, uh, you know, <laughs> right. Uh, okay. uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Sanitas Resta, uh, and uh, my presentation is actually it's about it's for those uh, in this room who uh, do not leave anything for luck, for God, or for the future. This is for those people who want to make uh, bring some change in their life, who want to win the game, who want to be in the game, right? Okay, and uh, let's start with this. <clears throat> How to win a game? That's the title of my presentation for today. I'm doing this for the first time, uh, so bear with me, please. Uh, I work for Gamesys, a uh, small little company in London, and. Uh, I'll be taking you through some of the rules that I've been following in and out of the game, uh, in my life, in my career, in my family, everywhere. So, the first rule. Know your strengths. Very simple. Right, before you uh, uh, start playing a game, you'll have to be very sure whether you know it or not, and what especially is your strength. When, you, when, you, when I say strength, it's not, not exactly what you're good at. It's basically, I think, what you can do better than others. That's your strength. And uh, that's how I take it. And uh, <clears throat> when I came to London uh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago when I was here, the only person I knew was uh, Dr. Suresh Mananda. And uh, thank you, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, like to get a job out here was pretty difficult. There were lots of pro computer programmers here. Uh, being uh, you know, Coming from the first batch of computer engineers from Nepal was quite a tough task. Mm -hmm. It was next to impossible for me to get a job here without knowing anyone and having no uh, UK degree. Right. But I... Uh, I gathered this that I have some strength apart from that, and that was 3D animation. I took uh, this up again and uh, showed them some of my works. In the first two years of my career, I worked as a 3D animator. That was 10 years uh, back in a learning based company in Old Street. Uh, and let me show you exactly what kind of work I used to do then, which is most of it, which I've already forgotten actually, so don't ask me questions based on that. <laughs>
um, to move on, this is very qu quite close to me, because, uh, my heart, because those days it used to be quite tough. I was, I was just struggling, and I didn't even, like just to go from where I used to live and uh, where I used to work. I didn't have a single uh, pound in my pocket to uh, ride the bus, so I used to literally walk from North London to South, uh, sorry, West, uh, West London, two hours one way, and that was how, when I was doing this kind of work, just to make people happy, you know, when you are not yourself. Now, this is the other project that I used to, uh, that I'd done uh, around that time. This was Prince Charles uh, invited in Abu Dhabi to deliver a lecture for, you know, like uh, uh, carbon emissions and things like that, pollution and stuff. But he didn't really want to go there. What we did was we created a hologram of him. Yeah. Right? This is the hologram. So we created a hologram of him. He took his video, made a hologram out of it, used all these jet fold buffers and everything. We like played all night, you know, and then we uh, projected it, uh, his hologram. And he was acting there, he was delivering the speech in Abu Dhabi. That was a big news then, you know, uh, eight years ago. And we were also like taking interviews and things like that in paper and all for a youngster like me. Then it was like, oh my god, this is London, right? <laughs> okay, then this is the other thing I, I'm quite proud of doing around that time in 2008. This is, uh, this is called ANSYS. And uh, what it actually does is it, every eight, uh, like 8 p.m. in the evening, it, it has a, a kind of video card in, in the, in the the Linux-based system. It actually records BBC News uh, in the evening and, and, and actually annotates it, uh, takes the audio out of the video on its own automatically, uh, gets the subtitle, like text out of it, out of the audio, and uh, makes paragraphs out of the text depending on different algorithms, like which kind of words are repeating and which new kind of words are coming up in the text. And out of the uh, subtitles, it, it actually decides which are the different slices of news within the whole video. And uh, all these videos are automatically uploaded in a server, and you can actually, you know, search what a news on any topic that you want to watch later on. So this was a, a kind of video database. It didn't exist until then, and that was an academic project I was doing with Imperial College London and Open University. Um, and this was actually used by BBC, as you can see up there. I don't know what they're doing now, but then they used to do it. Okay. Now this is a world map. We all know this, like most familiar map in the world, right? And all these logos are of the different uh, television channels of the world. And out of the 196 countries in the world, maybe more, like 52 countries were showing the kind of the animation I used to do from London, from my home. And I used to call it Yandra Kala, that was my company, right? And I was so proud, okay, for two years, I was like delivering a you know, their package to US, America, uh, sorry, uh, Australia. And even when I was in Nepal, uh, Kathmandu What's on a holiday, that? I used to see my credits on the screen. That was so embarrassing, right? Okay, this is not my, what my mom and dad sent me to do in London, right? Okay, not, no more movie, uh, no, no more animation, stuff like that. So I realized then that uh, this is not what I uh, supposed to do. This is not what people, why people like, uh, you know, Suresh Manasar taught me in, in my engineering. I had to do something like core programming, like, games that I was born for, I, I, I believe it from inside, right? So I had to change my life. I had to change the scenario. I had to create my own scenario. Someone should take me as a games developer. So what I did, this company where I used to work for, Lonely Planet, very popular in the US, we had information from all over the world, their culture, heritage, language, politics, tourism, everything. For 20 plus years, they had not used this information for any other purpose than broadcasting all over the world. What I did was a very simple thing. I collected all this information, put it in a database, and made a game out of it. So you have to answer the questions out of you know, uh, different uh, topics from around the world. Very simple thing, but it's still a game. And voila, I'm a games developer, right? Then I moved on. So I think the next, it takes me to the next rule, which is create scenarios. If, you, if you're not in the scenario yourself, create that for yourself. Create your own scenario that you want to see in your life, right? Now, let me actually show you uh, when the scenario was created. And when I actually went into the games developing, like eight years ago, what was the kind of games I used to develop? That was purely for kids, kids like my kids and your kids, okay? Okay, before that, like the company had a lot of uh, things they knew. It is knowledge, this is what I learned somewhere. If you can join these, uh, whatever you know in a way is your experience, but if you can join everything that you know in a very creative way, in a way that is better than anything, anyone else's, that is called creativity. And I think only thing I did there in the company was, I, did, I was a bit creative, that was all. Right. Okay, rule number three, make the right move. So once I was satisfied, like, okay, I can be a games developer in London now, I had to make the move, and they had to be right. So I think the third rule in winning a game is to make the right move. And this is how the move was. Jack with your buddies, explore the Binscape and watch TV shows. 
Thank you. So this was the uh, online platform, the virtual world for the kids. This is not a video. It's a video actually, but of the game. So you can actually take up the avatar. You can be the character. You can be in the. Uh, you can go into the virtual world. You can go and watch cinemas. We can, you can make new friends. You can chat with them. You can go to restaurants and have food. You can spend money, own money. You can maintain your own garden and everything. You know, you can buy a house. The whole virtual world was there for the kids. And when I started, we were only two people doing it. When I left the company after four years, we were like 40 plus, right? And uh, this was an amazing experience for me, for someone like me, who actually you know, wanted to have an experience uh, in London for gaming. So uh, we were known in the UK, we, we still are, this company, and uh, we made lots of games for kids. Kind of, uh, it actually faced me three BAFTA awards, which was amazing for 2011, 12, and 13, and which takes me actually to the next rule, rule number four, quit when you're winning. Because the only thing that can happen to you when you're winning is you could lose. There's only two possibilities, win or lose, right? So before you lose, Good. so that you're winning, right? So the next move was like this, online gaming. Assume this is your period of time of gaming online, right? You can divide it into five years, for example, year one, two, three, four, and five. Throughout the five years, you'll be returned all your money you've invested in online gaming. You'll be winning lots of money, but you'll be lo losing a sum as well. But that would be your entertainment charge, for example, right? And there it is, don't forget, there's always a chance that you can win a lot of jackpot during these five years. That's how the online gaming company works. It's not, it's not that bad, is it? It is not. You're spending, you're investing, you're, you're spending, you're having entertainment for which you're paying a little in your loss, but you will be keep, you'll keep winning throughout the five years. And there are a lot of, uh, believe me, there are hundreds of mathematicians in the company working, just working out this thing, how much you should win and when, so that you can get most of it back in the five years. So it's not bad. It gives you entertainment, and there's always a possibility that you can win jackpot every week, millions of pounds. And this take, took me to another, uh, the company where I work for, Gamesys, the biggest online um, betting and gambling platform in the UK, in America, in Spain, and in Sweden today. Uh, so this is Gamesys. We do online betting there, online gambling. And uh, the thing is, how does it all work, right? So I'm a games developer. It's something like this, the whole picture. Uh, the developers get the... Uh, information they need from designers and copywriters. The concept executives gives the, gives the information to designers and copywriters, whereas the business information systems and the analysts and the mathematicians and statistics, statisticians actually give the information they need, right? And we're just developing the games all day out, which goes to QA and the quality assurance and testing. And then the site editors put it up into the websites and they get the 24 hour support from people. So the kind of online game, uh, gambling and bat, uh, batching we do, is played by 24 million users only in the UK, every day, every hour, and more in the US. Right. Now, this might look a bit complex to few of us, and I want to make it more simple. The day-to-day -day life of a developer. This is something, uh, anyway, it's something like this. We drink a lot of coffee, like almost one every hour, and we convert it into computer codes. Right? So developers are basically uh, people, uh, machines that convert coffee into code, for example. Right, you can say. And uh, it, push, it pushes your brain so much, you're drinking coffee until like 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, even at the midnight, uh, you know, you're drinking coffee if you're late. But then, what, what, what I feel is like, after midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, I have to slow down my brain. It's on the same speed, working all, all day. Uh, it is the most difficult part of the day is to make your brain slow down. And this is where possibly what helps me out, actually. When I come here, I just forget everything. There's nothing technical about it. Good. Nice. And this is how it looks. You've seen the games, but you haven't seen what I, what I do all day, right? This is how it looks. Don't ask me how, how I got this code right here in the slide. But yeah, a typical day. Thousands of lines of code that we write every day. Yeah, and just smiling here. This is part of life. Okay, this is what we do all day. No one understands this. But on the other side, when you play the games, you actually enjoy it. And you actually win jackpot as well. And uh, as a last thing, let me show you what we do in games and what 24 million uh, users play in the UK.
So this was being says, uh, what, what, what I do now. And uh, believe me, when I got my first salary, I really wanted to buy the bus, which I couldn't drive that time, but I did, definitely. Uh, I'm at the end of my presentation, so I've got extra five uh, minutes. Uh, actually, what I enjoy the most is I can have a lot of uh, QAs. I can, I, can, I, can, I can keep talking, actually. <laughs> that, that's fine. Yeah. And uh, right. So uh, basically, uh, uh, very shamelessly, uh, I, I kind of proposed myself for today's presentation. Um, and despite being, you know, like uh, one of the one of those who actually founded this platform, because of only two reasons. Firstly, uh, I will never get an opportunity in my life to speak in front of uh, Dr. Suresh Mananda. <laughs> like 20 years ago, uh, when he came to Nepal, I was presenting in some Saudi hotel, and uh, there was the first IT uh, conference in Nepal. He was the chair, and now look at it now. So amazing, he's there again. And uh, secondly, uh, because uh, this is the 10th year, I complete uh, working in London as a games developer, and and, 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 so. and actually I wanted to have a party with you for 15 minutes, which I've just finished. Ten minutes, right? They're quite short. Nice. And <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> ten minutes, right? Okay. Sixteen. Sixteen. Oh, done. All right. Oh my God. This is over now. Party's over, folks. Thank you. Over to you. All right. Okay. Thank you.